Hello, this video is a review of AC rectification and it's going to be a very brief introduction to not just diodes but to SCRs, triacs, and how to connect these to Arduino in order to control AC power. I'm your host Lewis Laughlin. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Here is your very basic diode transformer circuit. This is called half wave rectification. If you understand anything about sine waves, they actually have 360 degrees. What you don't see down here below the line is the missing half cycle. In this case, which half cycle you get depends on which way this diode is turned. Your formulas are as follows. Peak, of course, is the highest, in this case, positive point, and that's RMS, which over here is 12.6 volts AC, times 1.414, and that's going to come out to about 18 volts. If you want the a average for a half wave, average is the power that's really equivalent to DC as far as power transfer. There's essentially two formulas for it. It's peak times 0.637 divided by 2, or in the case of this example, the average is 6, I mean, excuse me, 5.67 volts. Or the other formula is RMS times 0.9 divided by 2. This is the same circuit we had before, but this time I have inserted a 220 microfarad filter capacitor. The formulas still hold up, except the average now is going to be considerably higher. What happens is during the half on cycle, your capacitor will charge up. But during the half off cycle, it will discharge. In a way, what this does is give me a higher average voltage. Now, if the larger the capacitor, the more charge it will uh, store and the less steep this particular line will be. If I use a much bigger capacitor, depending on the resistance of the load, I would bring it over here somewhere. So what a capacitor does is it charges up during the on time, discharges during the off time, the rate of discharge is uh, proportional to the size of the capacitor and the resistance of the load. A heavier load, that is lower resistance, means the capacitor has a higher discharge rate during the off time. All right, before we go on, let's have a quick quiz. What is the voltage rating of my capacitor and my diode? Well, the capacitor rating must be greater than peak. And the diode rating is greater than two times peak. Why is that? Let's drop back one frame. All right. We know that this voltage up here, in this case, is going to be close to 18 volts peak. If the capacitor here is rated only for 15 volts, you're going to blow the capacitor. So realistically, you're going to need about a 20 volt or greater capacitor. Capacitors usually come in ratings of things like 25, 35, or 50 volts generally. Now, why do I need two times peak voltage rating on my diode? If this diode is rated for 30 volts, it will that is peak inverse voltage or PIV, it will short out. Why? On the positive half cycle, this capacitor is going to charge up to peak. But on the negative half cycle, the diode will be turned off, but it's going to be hit on the other side in the reverse bias mode by the negative peak. Well, um, it's the same size as the positive peak, so it has to be at least two times peak or more. So in this case, um, you're going to need to be safe, you're going to need a uh, 40 or 50 volt PIV, that's peak inverse voltage diode. Um, usually you're going to find these at a rating of 50 volts. So again, 
the capacitor rating is greater than peak and the diode rating is two times peak. Now we're going to be looking at full wave rectification. The reason this is called full wave rectification is I'm getting to utilize both of the half cycles. I don't have this half cycle wide gap or valley in the system. This is achieved by the diode bridge construction. But largely this diode and that diode will conduct on one half cycle. This diode and that diode will conduct on the other half cycle. This has a great advantage of giving us much more power output. Your peak formulas are exactly as before, but average now, that is DC average, is peak times 0.637. As you can see, we got away from dividing by 2. All right, in this frame, we have added a filter capacitor to our full wave DC circuit. As you can see here, this has really raised the average. It's pretty going to be pretty close to peak, depending on the resistance of the load and the size of the capacitor. The larger the capacitor, of course, the more energy that it can store and less of it that will discharge completely between this narrow gap between the half cycles. This little bit of variation that you often see at the top, you'll see this on an oscilloscope, is called ripple. When you sit here and you uh, rectify and filter DC like this, and then you apply a voltage regulator like a 7805, you're going to cut all that out, and that's how you produce a clean DC output for a power supply. So now that we have looked at diodes, both half wave and full wave, let's move on to a diode with a gate. Ah, let's see what that's all about. Here we're going to introduce a brand new component called the Silicon Controlled Rectifier, or SCR for short. Shown up here in the picture, instead of using a diode for rectification, I'm using an SCR. An SCR is like a diode with a gate. The diode up here uh, with the arrow will only allow the positive half cycle to pass to the gate. When I press the switch PB1, uh, Q1, the SCR, acts just like the half wave diode we saw in the earlier s slides. These are very important for switching power supplies and other applications, and I have a completely different video on how these work. In this plate, what we've done is taken two SCRs, tied their gates together, and connected the anode of one to the cathode of the other, and vice versa. This forms a device called a triac. A triac instead of being a rectifier, now becomes a full-scale, solid-state AC switch. Note in the previous plate that you have to trigger the gate from the anode side of the circuit. If you try to trigger the gate from the cathode side over here, it won't work. With a triac, you have to trigger the gate from the MT2 side, main terminal 2. If you try to trigger from M main terminal 1, it will not work. Here is another brief look at a triac. A triac gate is tripped by a small current from the T2 side of the circuit. The main current flow is between T1 and T2. Here is your load. Here is a current limiting resistor for the gate. It's tied into the T2 side of the circuit. Close the switch which could be a very small switch, and you have triacs in cases that can carry 10, 20 amps. Note in this particular circuit there is a high voltage shock potential on the gate. When we look at triacs in the later uh, video dedicated to them, we will show you how to get away from this dangerous high voltage problem 
and how to switch it on with a microcontroller. Pictured here is a typical lamp dimmer circuit that you use every day in your home. The center of the device, of course, is a triac. And with the other associated components, we are able to switch on only part of the AC half cycles in order to control lamp intensity. We will learn more about that in the main triac video. Finally, here's just a rough outline of using an Arduino to control a triac through a photo triac optocoupler by utilizing what is called a zero crossing detector. All of this will be covered in my separate videos dedicated to these particular subjects and we will work our way back to Arduino in every case. What follows now is going to be an actual live video of the waveforms on an oscilloscope being controlled through a triac. Thanks for listening and catch my other videos. This time we're looking at full wave AC which is going to be your top trace and now I'm just using the uh, triac as a triac and not through a diode bridge and if you notice each half cycle below be it positive or negative I can control the on time and particularly right here for instance my light is very bright here it is very dim this is what you call phase angle control or phase control and of course it's being done by, our, by an Arduino Nano what good is something like this okay say you first cut on a heater maybe you're um, doing an incubator for chicken eggs uh, argumentably and it gets really cold and you need to crank the power up into the heat source let's cut it on full power and get it up and as you measure the temperature and as you approach the desired temperature that you want you begin to electronically cut back on the amount of energy being delivered to the heater and when it reaches the point that you want you just put in enough energy to keep the uh, device at a fixed temperature without overshooting and having it go down this also saves a lot of energy